Well, apparently not all inhalers are equal. A new study finds some asthma treatments carry a bigger carbon footprint. Joining us for more on this is Associate Professor Tan Yap Chuan. He is Director of Research at Sing Health Polyclinics, as well as the study's author, Prof Tan. Welcome to the show. Now, it's quite a, a research that you've presented by uh, Sing Health Polyclinics that looks specifically into different asthma medications and inhalers. Carbon footprint, I, I mean, you have to tell me what prompted the study in this area in the first place. Right. Uh, for a start, I mm. think everyone in Singapore probably feel the heat mm -hmm. and uh, we easily find the temperature rising the daytime up to 33, 34. I mean, uh, in recent years, uh, this has been going up uh, and I think we are uh, getting uh, heated up by it. It's okay. not a good thing for health. And of course, uh, Singapore Polyclinics, uh, we have a robust program on preventive health research. <laughs> and actually, asthma is a disease where uh, there are very effective medications. We call it the controller medications, which are actually the cornerstone of asthma therapy. Mm. Uh, but we still see patients having exacerbation. So, uh, Aligned to preventive health research, we are focusing on uh, the treatment of asthma and getting to know that uh, certain inhalers mm -hmm. actually generate what we call uh, greenhouse gases. And as the term greenhouse actually uh, imply, you know, it's some place where you feel the heat, mm -hmm. right? So that's what uh, triggers the interest. And uh, we all know that certain re uh, inhalers, we call it the reliever inhalers, mm -hmm. actually contains a chemicals uh, known as the hydrofluorocarbons. Ah. And these are potent uh, greenhouse gases. So what it means is that if we use it, it is released, it traps the heat within uh, our uh, environment mm -hmm. and uh, the temperature can go up further. And uh, we also know that uh, burning, for example, generates carbon dioxide and also trap heat. So uh, this use of the uh, chemicals that generate the greenhouse gases uh, we measured them in terms of carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. and, and because we have uh, patients who are actually very well controlled, mm -hmm. and we also have patients that results in asthma attack, ending up in hospitals, and potentially can be fatal. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to compare if the patient actually gets very well controlled, what would be their carbon footprint look like? Mm -hmm. And for those with frequent exacerbations, will that generate even more carbon footprint? So mm -hmm. that's the basis of the research. Right. So uh, I, 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 I understand uh, the basis of the research better now, but in terms of the significance of the impact, say that we all take accountability for our own carbon footprints as asthma sufferers, right? But in terms of the impact, I mean, surely there are other areas that you would see far more impact than this. Um, actually, on the individual level, mm -hmm. uh, if you have, uh, if a patient with asthma but has attained very good control, mm -hmm. uh, his uh, health is actually very well maintained, just like anybody else. Uh, so at the individual level, we can actually zoom in how the uh, patient with asthma actually can attain good asthma control all through their life so that they are no different from anybody. I mean, that's the ideal state. Then we get to know about it eh, on top of the individual health. Mm. What about the planetary health, right? Uh, right. And of course, uh, we all know about this global warming yeah. uh, and, and potentially it can be exacerbated because of patients using the reliever medication for uh, frequent asthma attack. Okay. And that is, can result even uh, more damage to the environment. All right. Say, say, say we, we, we buy into this argument and we do want to make sure that we leave no carbon footprint, including in our medication. Um, what should we do for asthma sufferers? What are you recommending? Uh, what does the study recommend? Okay. The study really, really shows quite explicitly that asthma control mm. actually results in lesser carbon footprint. Mm. So from the individual health perspective, I think it's good for the person to attain uh, good asthma control. Where, uh, then they can go on living, they can go out, they can play, they can take any food that they wish to. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what life is all about, right? So that's the priority for so all the patients. Go to your doctor, get yourself checked for the proper medication and inhalers yes. because there are many out there. Yes. So, so what are you recommending? 
Okay, so uh, there are two main groups of uh, asthma inhalers. Okay. Uh, the inhaled medications are the best yeah. because they deliver the medicine directly to the airway okay. and the dose is super tiny. Mm. So a uh, tiny dose of medication enough to keep you healthy, why not? Okay. Right, so they need to learn that the use of controlled medication is the choice of treatment. But a lot of time, uh, patients only get to treatment when they uh, get into trouble, for example, yeah, having yeah, asthma yeah, attack. Yeah, yeah. So this is the one that we call it the reliever medication. Uh, may not be necessarily uh, helpful, yeah. okay, if your asthma control is uh, attained, right? So you do not need to rely, rely on this rescue therapy with the reliever medications. Okay, so the thing is, right, when the patient goes to you, are they going to be educated on this? Are your clinics going to be telling them, hey, just for your awareness, you, you can also reduce your carbon footprint while managing your, your uh, asthma as well. So there will be some education. Yes, certainly. Yeah. And uh, it is not simple. We actually use different measures to educate, to raise the awareness of the patients. And... Uh, if the, the data actually shows that over nine years, from 2015 mm. to 2023, mm. more and more of our patients treated in Singapore polyclinics actually attain good asthma control. Mm. And we also show from uh, the report that uh, the carbon footprint correspondingly declined. So this is ideal. Better health, better environment, better planet. So this is uh, what we desire uh, the whole world to attain. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a last question for you in terms of, you know, what's next for well, yourself as well as the research in this area? And um, is there, are you going to take this investigation further, perhaps? Certainly. Uh, what we do not know that if we tell the patients about the carbon footprint, mm. will they change the perspective of the treatment that they are receiving, knowing that uh, if you get into trouble with asthma attack, then carbon footprint will be uh, elevated. So, would they change their perspective knowing that they are also part of any living creatures on Earth, right? And they'll be affected by climate change. Mm -hmm. So, this is one. Two, of course, from the care provider's perspective, we want to know uh, uh, how about training our doctors, yeah. our nurses, mm -hmm. our pharmacies to raise the awareness uh, of the environmental impact on asthma treatment yeah. and, and hopefully they will be able to impart the knowledge to their patients. All right, you can save the world one puff at a time. Yes, certainly. <laughs> yes, you are rightly pointed out. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in. Uh, I've been speaking there with Associate Professor Tan Nyap Chuan from the Singh Health Polyclinics.